Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a to-do list app in Golang. With this one project, you can learn the basics of Golang. I'm going to be covering topics like structure, arrays, functions, loops, and so on. The only two requirements of this project is that you should have Golang installed on your system, and also you should have the basic programming knowledge in any of the languages. Now I'm just going to create a new file called main.go. Go is the extension for Golang. Now we will write package main. This is important in all the files. And then we'll import some necessary items. For basic input and output, we'll import buff IO. Then column, I mean the comma is not needed. Then we want the uh, in order to get the printing and basic some other input also, we want SFMT. Then for using the exit function, we need OS and also to convert string and uh, other things to convert from one data type to another we want str convert it is to convert string to another now we will create a struct that represent the task so type task and then struct this will create a struct and then we need two member variables one of them will be the task name which will be a string so we can specify task name then the data type that is string then we want a variable to represent whether the task is completed or not so i'll just name it completed and the data type will be boolean or bool now i will declare an array to store all the tasks using the variable keyword var tasks this one will be the name and then it's going to be an array of the type that stores objects of the type this struct now there are multiple ways of creating declaring variables in uh, golang We'll be covering all of them now the main function is needed in all the projects so we have a func then main this is how we declare functions or uh, create functions in golem now in here i'm just going to add two more functions one of them is to add the task so func or function add task and then it takes in an argument which is the string of the task so task of the type string then I'm, uh, we are going to create a new variable but this time we are using a different method we are not going to specify the data type or the variable keyword we can just use new task and then colon is equal to this will also create a new variable and then we are going to create an object of this task struct then we need to add in two arguments one of them is for the task name colon task which we pass in as the argument and then we also need the completed which we pass in as false as default the task will not be completed in here it should not be parentheses but it should be curly braces then into the tasks array i am going to add the new task using tasks is equal to append this will uh, allow us to add new item to the tasks array we want to append to the tasks array itself and we want to add the new task and then in the end i'm just going to print I'm going to print a line task added. So fmt dot print line task added. There are also three print statements that we'll be covering in this video. Print line is used uh, when we use print line in the end a slash n will be added. That is, if we print anything after this, it will be in a new line. That is the advantage of using print line. Now we want a function to list all the tasks. Function list tasks. It doesn't take in any argument now we need we'll create a for loop and then we'll print all the tasks by looping through this tasks array right so we use for i which represent the index and then task in using this colon is equal to range of tasks this will loop through the tasks array this index is used to loop through the tasks array now we are going to create a new variable called status which will be equal to n and n in here n represent not done and if the task is completed we will be using d instead of n now we check if task dot completed that is completed is a member variable for the task structure therefore we can do this if it is completed then we set the status variable to d which represents done and in the end i'm just going to print all the tasks using printf so that we can format the string properly like in c and all printf is used to, to format the string so first we want the 
uh, integer or the index shown which is using percentage d then we want the string to be shown using percentage s and then we want the character to be shown for this also we use the per, uh, percentage s itself there is no separate data type called character just like in python we just have string for both characters and strings and then we specify the variables one is i plus one because the index the in default starts with zero but for a um, better user experience we wanted to start with one therefore i plus one then we want to specify the string which is going to be task dot task name and then we also have the status which is either n or d with this the list task function is also done now we'll get into the next function which is going to be mark completed right okay one thing that i'm going to change is it's not any mistake but so that you can understand in here i'm just going to show another method of creating a variable which is using variable status and then we can specify the data type string is equal to n this is another type of creating the variable now we have created in one two and three methods right now we'll get into the uh, next function which is marking the task as completed so mark completed it takes in the index as an argument which is an integer now we want to check if the index is valid it should be greater than or equal to one and also it should be less than or equal to the length of the tasks right because the index what we mean in here is it starts from one and not zero that's why we are setting it uh, greater than or equal to 1 instead of 0. Now we access that tasks using tasks index minus 1 because the language, the index in the language starts from 0, but we pass in the one that starts with 1 in here. Therefore, we'll have to subtract 1 while accessing the task. And we use the completed member variable and set it to true. And then in the end, I'm just going to print a new line, print line task marked as complete and what if the index is not valid in that case i'm just going to again fmt dot print line invalid index with this the mark completed one is also done we'll get into the edit task function function edit task and then we again want uh, some arguments one of them is the index which is an integer so we'll have to specify the data type and the variable name and then we also want the new edited string right so we pass in a new argument new string which is of the type string so we can do it in this format again we check if the index is valid so i'm just going to copy everything from the mark completed one just paste and just i'm going to change this part inside the if statement so tasks again index minus one dot task in name this time we are going to change the name of the task which is going to be set to the new task and then again i'm just going to print using fmt dot print line task edited successfully okay with this this function is also done we just uh, use the access the member variable and the, using the index and then set it to the new task that we pass in as argument the next one is deleting a task the function name will be delete task and again for this one we just need to pass in the index so that we can specify which task we want to delete and then again we all we want to check if the index is valid so i'm just going to copy this paste and in here i'm just going to instead of task edited successfully task deleted success or just deleted is needed and in here i'm just going to remove that we want to remove an item from the uh, array right so for this one also we can use the append function itself but this time we first pass in the name of the array then index minus one after a colon and then in the end what we want to delete is the item of the index so this index is used to delete an item at index uh, from the array in golang Again, with this, the delete ta delete task function is also done. Now we'll get into the main function and write the input statements. 
first i'm just going to create a new variable index input which is of the type integer so this is a another way this is the way to create a variable you can also create using simple syntax without using this variable keyword and all but in here we are just declaring it therefore we have to either use this method or we can use this method right for this one when we are declaring and uh, uh, what giving value assigning values in different locations this syntax cannot be used this syntax cannot be used right so now we have our index input int then we want the task input and also new task input which are going to be string i'm just going to print some lines fmd dot print line options to choose from different input options just going to copy that then in here i'm just going to put add task so if the user clicks on one and enters then it will be uh, the option to add task two will be the option to list tasks three will be to mark as complete four to edit task five to delete task six to exit for using this exit one we imported the operating system or os module okay now we need to create a new scanner for the input for this we use this buff io right so in here i'm just going to create it using the symbol method scanner colon equal to buff io dot new scanner we are creating a new scanner using the buff io module and then we want the standard input using os dot std in now i'm just going to create a for loop because in uh, golang there is no while keyword so we can but we can use the for loop uh, and uh, use it just like the while loop works so for and then inside that fmd dot print this print is uh, used so that uh, the input will and this string will be shown in the same line so enter choice one two three four five and six these are the choices possible so if, when we use print the next input or output will be shown in the same line itself because slash n will not be automatically added but if we use print line slash n will be added and we'll go into the next line that's why i'm using print now we are going to scan for an input and then the input that we get i mean the input that we get from the scanner will be stored in the variable input so scanner dot text will be stored in the input variable now we have a choice it is either one two three four five or six and then we also need to check for the error so choice and error we are checking in the same time and by doing this if the conversion fails an error is returned and it is stored in the error variable <coughs> so in here i'm just going to convert the string to an integer using the str convert uh, module so a to i which is used to convert from string to integer and we want to convert the input into an integer now we check if the error doesn't exist that is if error is not equal to nil that is if there is an error in that case we am just going to print line invalid choice and if there is no error we just continue in here also after uh, print the invalid choice we are going to continue that is we are going to on to the top of this for loop we will continue again from this part that's that is why we are using the continue statement now if the error is if there is no error in that case we'll create a switch statement using for the variable choice now the case one will be uh, for entering or adding the task so fmt dot print enter task then we want to again create scanner dot scan scanner dot scan and then the task input will be equal to scanner dot text all these variables are already created so the text that we get from the input will be stored in the task input and then we call the add task function and pass in the task input as the argument 
okay with this the case one is done next is case two which is for listing all the tasks for this we need not look, uh, add for an input and all we can just call the functions then the next case is to mark as completed in here we want to get the input of the index so fmd dot print enter index and then again we are going to scan using the scanner but this time the uh, data will be stored in the index input variable right i guess we have it. yeah the index input is created already in here index input and also we want to check for the error in this, this variable we are converting it into an integer str convert a to i the scanner dot text scanner dot text is converted into an integer and what this does is the underscore is used to discard the error value if it is returned right then after converting it we will call the mark completed function and we need to pass in the index input as the variable as the argument then the next case is for editing the task again fmt dot print enter index to get the index again scan dot scan for the index input I'm just going to copy this line the index input line and then again we need to scan but this time for the new task i'm just going to copy all these these three lines from the case one paste it in here but this time just going to change the variable name to new task input we have created separate variables for them and after doing that we'll just call the edit task function and we need to pass in the index input first and then the new task input next is case 5 this time it's for deleting a task just going to copy all these these three lines for the index input and then i will call the delete task function and pass in the index input the last case is to exit i mean the sixth case we also have delete uh, default case the sixth case we use the os.exit function to just exit the program and we pass in zero and then the default case is case if it's not if the choice is not equal to one two three four five or six in that case we have an invalid choice therefore we just type in invalid choice so with this i guess the uh, code is done now to run that i'm just going to go into the terminal and run go build and then the name of the file main.go okay there is a spelling mistake it should be print line and there is also an 83rd line right here also print line now that also in the 56th line okay so those three errors will be fixed new task is undefined is new string and in the 55th line also there is tasks it should be tasks okay now all the errors are fixed let's run it and wait for the executable to be created now the main.exe is created let me just run it dot slash main.exe now the program started running let's add a new task this is the first task we'll add another task second task now we list the task using two now the all the two two tasks are listed and both of them have n which states not done now let me just mark the first task as completed now let me list it again now it is set to d next is editing the task i will edit the second task second task edited list it's edited now next is deleting the task i will delete the first task let me just list it now the second task is made into the first task then the last one is exiting or we'll before that we'll just try the invalid choice now invalid choice next let's next next just uh, exit using six which means the program runs without any problem with this i hope you learned the basics of golang if you did please subscribe